So if you're thinking about living on your land stationary while you build, so in an RV like we did, while we built our shop house, this video is going to be for you. I'm gonna tell you everything that you need to have set up so that you can live comfortably in your RV while you build your house. I'm gonna also tell you a few things that we found that's gonna make a really, really big difference in terms of comfort and budget for you. So this is gonna be a very helpful video. One of the questions that I got was, what do your hookups look like? It was in this video about what to expect, by the way. Be sure to go and watch that later. But I wanted to tell you exactly how we set up all of our utilities on our land and um, also, again, some things that are gonna make a big difference for you. Let's talk about the three things that you're gonna need. You're gonna need three things. You're gonna need power, water, that's our wellhead, and sewer hookups. It's gross, I know. Let's talk about power first. So with power, we have a 400 amp panel. Our plan is to build our shop house, which is right over here. And then eventually, right past where the goats are, right now we're going to be building a main house. So this shop house will eventually be a guest house. And I really wanted a big workshop working on building my ultimate workshop in there. And so I um, wanted to have this building as well as our main house that we're gonna build probably in a couple years. So as, as you can see, we have a power pole right here on the corner of our lot. We came down um, from the power pole, our transformers up there, right there and we have a 400 amp service. Now with this, it's cool because we can subfeed two 200 amp panels. So we have a 200 amp panel at our barn door over there, and then we're gonna have a 200 amp panel at our main house over there. The cool thing about this panel too, and my dad got this panel for me, is that, and I open this up so you can see all of the things inside. So we have a 200 amp service right here. We have a 200 amp service right here, which is feeding our barn door. We have two additional um, breaker spots. So we have a 50 amp hookup right here. On this side, right now, this um, this side, we have a 30 amp hookup. When my dad came and helped me build the house over there, uh, he has a 30 amp uh, hookup for his pull trailer. He doesn't have a fifth wheel. And so we had it set up with a 30 amp um, for him. I think when you're building your house and you're gonna be building your hookups, you're gonna wanna think about power management uh, down the road. So depending on what your building is, like this really works well for us because we have two separate services i'm gonna put the panel back on in just a second but we have two separate services that are going to function really well for both our barn dough and our house and then what we did was we ran some conduit over here we ran a 50 amp panel i'm sorry a 50 amp plug from the panel and we attached it to a pressure treated four by six now in order to get our panel right here we had to get a septic permit and our septic permit is actually the only permit our county requires which is really cool we did have our well pump um, permitted actually as well but it's not required but in order to get the hookup from the power company we had to have a septic permit and our septic system was uh, it was a bit of a problem let me explain so we wanted to have two full hookup rv spots next to our barn door one on this side one on the other side really we're trying to make our house um, as friendly for visitors and things as possible and so it was important to us that we had this so that if guests came over they could stay in the rv or if we had friends that came over that had their rv they could stay in that other spot now when you have septic systems you have to be able to get a certain amount of drop um, there's specific codes for the amount of drop that you're going to need now when our excavator came and did our site prep he really went to town on this thing he dug down until he hit rock which is great because you can build a really solid foundation. The problem with that is that when we're trying to put septic pipe in, it's tough to get the drop that we need. This septic pipe runs all the way around the back of the house, all the way down the side of the house. That's a clean out. That's not a hookup. Our other RV hookup spot is right there. And then this connects to that main line, which connects to the house. And then it runs down to our septic tank, which is right there. So if I had to do it again, I definitely would have t told the excavator that we were gonna build up, do some a lot more compacting rather than dig down until we got rock because it made the septic system a lot more difficult and a lot more expensive to run. That all being said, our septic system was pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but if you're buying a house, you wanna make sure that you get a good perk test done. You know how long of leach field you're gonna need and then it'll tell you how much it's gonna cost. Now, whenever I told somebody that we were living in our RV, full time while we were building, they would always ask about doing cleanouts and managing the tanks in the RV. So with our tanks, what we would do is just leave our gray tanks open so that when we take showers or do laundry, do dishes, we wouldn't have to about worry about filling up the tanks all the way. 
uh, when we flushed out the black tanks, we would do that about once a week. And then we would make sure to clean out the black tanks really well, like filling them up and doing a, a tank flush about once a month. So something that's kind of important to talk about with this that I think is going to be helpful for you and maybe saving some money is that when you talk to the county health inspector about what kind of a tank you're going to need for your septic tank size, they're going to make a calculation based on maximum capacity at all times. So let's say we told him that we're going to be building a house over there. We're going to have this house right here, this barn dough, that's four bedrooms. Plus we're going to have two RV hookups. And so the calculation that they did was on that maximum use. The guy that did the septic system for me said, hey, you just need to tell him you're doing a three bed, two bath with no uh, garbage disposal. By the way, garbage disposals add distance to the leach field and it, I'm not add distance to the leach field. Garbage disposals add size to the um, septic tank that you're gonna need if you have one or not. We don't have a sep uh, garbage disposal in our system because um, we didn't want to have a bigger size tank. So uh, that's just something to note there. So we didn't have any problems with like clogs or anything like that when we had our septic set up. It was basically like being hooked up at an RV park. So if you've ever done RV parking at, a, at an RV park um, with full hookups, it's exactly the same. So now that we had power and now that we had septic, we needed our well. Again, this is what our wellhead looks like. And this is our well house. Excuse this PEX piping. I just had to work with what I had to work with. So we decided to put our well house right here uh, next to the wellhead for a few reasons. First thing that we were thinking about is that we have our garden that's right over here. We also have our shop, which was not built. Now, if the shop was built or if we had the uh, steel building for it, we would have probably put all of that equipment inside the shop. The reason why we didn't do that is because we got the well, drill, the well drilled probably back in September. We moved on the land around December and we didn't get the kit until mid-January. The house, the shop wasn't built until February. So we needed something that we could use right away. The benefit of having the well house right here is again, just like with our panel, we can run and do a run directly to the building that we build over there at some point. We don't have to go into all of our gravel and dig up our driveway and stuff like that. The other thing that's kind of cool is that the well house is right next to, or closer to the garden. So when we want to run a spigot out to our garden, it's going to be probably easier. So here we also ran, this is our uh, another freeze-proof faucet, and it's actually wrapped in insulation and a bag because it would freeze up. And so we have our water hookup right here. It's next to our power and our sewer. So all of these hookups are right here. We didn't have to run a long hose or anything. We used a heated hose for the winter time and it did really well at keeping things from freezing. Even though it did well from keeping things from freezing for the most part, we got a few days that were very, very cold where it did freeze up. That's why we had to cover it. So we have all of our utilities right here along this parking space. We have the same thing on the other side with the exception that on the other side, the water comes out of the shop instead of going a water line all the way around it. So we knew that we had one full-time site on this one. We would get that side done at some point. And so we wanted, to, when, when my parents came, we just ran a hose long around the outside. But we have a water spigot on the other side that is attached to the building that people can hook up. So we have all of the hookups available on the other side too. We have sewer, water, and power. So something that I think is really important to talk about is that uh, not every county allows for people to stay in RVs on their land. I'm super thankful that our county doesn't have any rules regarding that, but there's a lot of counties that say you cannot live in an RV on your property without a house being there. So this wouldn't work for everybody. I also wouldn't say that you should trust realtors when they tell you these kinds of things. No offense to realtors, I'm actually a real estate broker. You don't get any of that training when you're getting licensed as a real estate broker. That's the truth. So they don't necessarily know, they might have heard something, but you need to get it from the county yourself and don't take somebody's word for it because it could be an extremely costly mistake. If you find out that you can't live there, you could get a, a big issue for sure. 
Our goal though with our RV was to feel like we had a house that was like a small home, not like we were camping. So people say RV, RVing is camping, it's not camping. I like camping a lot and we did not want to feel like we were camping at all. So we did a few things to make sure that it didn't feel like that. The first thing that we did was we made sure to get a 125 gallon propane tank and hook it up. So this tank not only gives us cheaper propane, but we didn't have to go and get run and fill up our tanks all the time. It's actually way cheaper to get propane in a big tank like this. And most places you don't have to buy a tank. They will either lease you a tank or with our company that if you pay for at least one tank a year on your first year, you don't have to pay for the tank or use of the tank. So it's a usage amount before you have to pay. But that really helps keep costs down because we had in our RV, we have a on-demand gas hot water heater, a gas oven, gas range. And so very helpful to have that so that we didn't have to go out and buy, you know, tanks of propane all the time. Something else that I think is very important to consider is that when you're getting the grade done for your parking spot, you need to make sure that it's very, very level. When the guys came, we had the first site prep guy come and do really good work. Then we had our second guy that did our septic system came. He did good work on the septic, but he did not level this grade at all. And I'm going to show you, it, it's, it's not super tilted but as you know especially if it's in the front um, the stabilizers they really have to move and the higher that you go the more the RV shakes so the more level that you can be the more solid of a surface that you can be on and even pouring a pad for your RV to be on would be very very helpful we did not do that because we were trying to spend money on our house and our barndo but that would have been really helpful so if you're having an RV spot, make sure that it's level and make sure that it's very, very well compacted. Now we have this tripod on the front, which is helpful, but it's really high up here and we have it sitting on cinder blocks. So adding the cinder blocks, I think was very important, very helpful. And we have cinder blocks also for our front supports so that we didn't have to go so high up so that we could get a little bit more support. But we did find that we would have to re-level quite a bit. Nothing says you're in an RV like it's shaking, like you're in an earthquake every time you walk up and down the stairs. So that's, I think, really, really important. The next thing that I think is really important is shelter from the wind, the rain, and the snow. If you're in an area that has bad weather, we have crazy winds here. We'd have 60 mile an hour winds. Before we had our shop built, it was swaying like crazy. There were some nights that we thought we were going to tip over. And um, we looked it up. It won't tip over in 60 mile an hour winds. Um, you know, if you think about when you're driving and stuff, you're going like, 65 70 miles an hour wind and you have cross winds and things too so they're made to withstand the wind but you can definitely feel it that goes along the lines of stabilization stabilization is very important getting a front tripod is a must um, just really getting stabilized but having a wind break or a cover for your your rv would be a very big difference and be very beneficial especially when you have the front door right here you know we're in mud season right now and last year when we were living in here with mud season and ticks and all kinds of things it was a mess constantly the shoes were always a mess and so if you can have a cover uh, lean to something to park your rv in that's going to be very helpful and it's going to make it feel even less like you're in an rv and even more like you're in a home the last thing is internet so this is our Starlink. We have Starlink and I really love it. When we were traveling full time, I was using cell service. Uh, I was using Wi-Fi whenever we could get it. We had hotspots and things and bandwidth was constantly a problem. If you're gonna be stationary, if you can get Starlink, I recommend it 100%. I know that there's SPAC orders on stuff and that it's tough to get the dishes and things, but it is so worth it. It's fast, it's reliable, and you don't have bandwidth requirements, which is really, really helpful. So especially because I do digital marketing I do paid advertising for um, local businesses and um, some e-commerce stores and so it's imperative that I have good internet and that I can continue to do my work so I really love Starlink for that reason but if you have any questions please feel free to comment down below um, be sure to subscribe and follow along as I mentioned we're building out our homestead and our barndo we're doing all the work ourselves so follow along with this journey and I'll see you on the next video have a good one